morning. Welcome to worship. I hope you're all tuned in on your radio and that you don't decide to tune out in any time that we're here. Even though it's a little bit cooler, it's a wonderful day that the Lord has made. And so we gather to rejoice and give thanks and be glad in it. And we will be checking on your way out to see if you're glad. Got a response. I can't tell what the response is. It's probably best. <laughs> anyway, it's wonderful to be here with you today and to be able to share in the Sacrament of Holy Communion, our community communion together as we all share in that one body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let us begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our gospel reading for today comes from the book of St. Matthew in the 18th chapter. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Pray together the prayer of the day. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. Much grace and peace to all of you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. No more than 11 months ago in Dallas, Texas, less than a year ago, an ex-police officer named Amber Geiger was convicted of murdering a black man named Botham Jean in his own apartment. You might remember the story. She had entered Botham's apartment by mistake. She thought it was her own. They lived in the same building. She thought Botham was an intruder in her apartment and she shot him in the chest. At her conviction hearing a year later, Botham's heartbroken younger brother named Brant took the witness stand and told Amber, looking at her eye to eye, he told Amber that he loves her. He told Amber that he wants only the best for her, that he wants, that he wanted her to give her life to Christ and that he forgives her. Then he said, this is what Botham would have wanted as well. And then after asking permission from the judge, Brant got up, walked across the courtroom and embraced the woman who killed his brother. Amber received the long embrace sobbing in front of an astonished and emotional courtroom full of people. Amber Geiger was then escorted off to prison, which is as justice should be. Because sin has real consequences and forgiveness cannot make those consequences disappear. But despite any controversy about what justice actually is in this case, Brant's forgiveness and letting go is a powerful and courageous witness to God's mercy love and reconciliation in this world. How often should I forgive? Peter asked. Is seven times enough? And in response, Jesus tells a story about a slave who owed the king 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is something like 150,000 years worth of wages for the average worker at the time. 10,000 talents. It was an amount of debt literally impossible to pay. And the king forgave the debt. He just let it go. Jesus's point for Peter is that you cannot quantify the enormity of God's mercy and love for you. How much mercy should you give to others? Now I want to emphasize again that mercy and forgiveness doesn't mean we allow people to harm or abuse others. Behavior that harms or oppresses others must be stopped. Mercy and forgiveness don't eliminate consequences, but they can reconcile relationships or at the very least, it keeps possibilities open for reconciliation. Just like in our Old Testament reading for today from the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Do you remember the story of Jacob's family, his son Joseph and all of his brothers? Joseph's brothers weren't that fond of Joseph when they were younger because Joseph was Jacob's favorite. And one day, when his brothers had just had enough of him, they threw him in a pit and told their father that he'd been eaten by a wild animal. Then they sold him to some nomads who brought him to Egypt, where he landed in prison. 
But God abided, and as the years and as the years passed, Joseph actually won the favor of the Pharaoh and was given charge over the entire kingdom. Well, Jacob died, their father died, and a severe famine brought Joseph's brothers to Egypt where they found themselves now in the awkward and humiliating position of needing Joseph's aid for their own survival. Joseph's brothers were stuck. They were afraid because they were bound to their past. They could see no way into the future. They could not see a way to be freed from a past characterized by their cruel and unjust behavior that ended up destroying their relationship with their brother. This is where today's Old Testament reading begins in chapter 50. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Now, unlike the days prior to being thrown into a pit, Joseph, in this passage, is now in a position of power and influence. And his brothers are in a vulnerable spot. Joseph has everything he needs to get even. Everything is in place to avenge his pain, and he would be justified in doing so, justified by any reasonable soul. But Joseph did not do the reasonable thing. In fact, what he did would have been seen as just plain irrational by some. Joseph isn't resentful. He doesn't exact revenge. He doesn't even say, I told you so. And maybe this is why Joseph wept. Because forgiveness and letting go can be some of the hardest work we do as followers of Jesus. It's so much easier to harbor anger and resentment. It's so much easier to hang on to the self-righteousness of knowing that others who have caused us pain deserve punishment. But doing so diminishes possibilities for the future. It diminishes the space in our lives for the Holy Spirit to work the reconciliation, healing, and new life that God promises and desires for us. It binds us to the past in ways that prevent us from turning and leaning fully into the future that God is creating for us and calling us into. So instead, Joseph let go. He claimed God's promise of forgiveness and lived as though it was actually true. Joseph let go of his own desire for retribution and revenge. In the words of Christopher Davis, Joseph knew that if they were ever going to be able to move forward together, he would need to be at peace with the fact that those who hurt him might never reap what they have sown. They might never get what they have coming to them. 
Joseph let go of resentment and revenge and grasped onto God's vision of reconciliation and new life. He let go so that God could use him to make a way into the future when there seemed to be no way at all. Do not be afraid, Joseph said. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. You must remember that letting go is not the same thing as ignoring or forgetting about your pain and suffering. Joseph didn't do that. Now, letting go and forgiving is about trusting God's promise that in the midst of your pain and suffering, God is present with you, creating hope and light and new life. Forgiveness and letting go can be very hard. But in Christ, we have abundant mercy and forgiveness. We have a God who let go of his divinity and took on human flesh to the point of death. This is my body and blood, Jesus said, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. We are free to make new ways into the future in the same way. A former parishioner of mine says that by forgiving those who have sinned against us, we do not allow the past to dictate our future. Good people, you are forgiven. Always. No matter what. No matter how dark or hopeless the world can be, we are free from our past and free for a future open to all the possibilities our life-giving, merciful, and loving God has to give. For that we can say, thanks be to God. And now I invite you to join me in our prayers of letting go moving forward and other prayers of intercession. Gracious and loving God, we come before you with humility and gratitude for all you have given us as a people and as your church. We thank you for amazing grace and for the great cloud of witnesses who have enabled us to become members of this church body. We are grateful for faithful leaders, including pastors, teachers, and musicians who have nurtured our faith. We pause now in the midst of these unprecedented times to ask your guidance. Help us as a congregation and as individuals to let go of the past that binds us. We do so knowing full well that unless we release what has been, we cannot open our hearts to become the church you want us to be. Lord, we know you have great plans for us. We pray for courage to face the future with confidence. Energize and revitalize us as your people. Grant us the gift of discernment that we may know and do your will. Be with us and strengthen us for the journey that lies ahead, trusting in your steadfast love to guide us. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, we pray especially for people on the West Coast that are dealing with raging forest fires. For those of us that have family and friends that live out west, we pray a special prayer of protection that your holy angels would gather them into their arms and let them flee to safety. And Lord, in accordance with your good and gracious will for this world which you created, we ask that you send um, fire smothering rains, not in deluge, but that will, that will cause uh, the fires to be put out and life 
to renew once again. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And now we have that special time when we can't embrace in peace so we can just toot our peace. We want to give a little toot of peace to one another. <laughs> I said a toot, not a graduation parade. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, forgiveness has been spoken and received. You are fresh, you are clean, and now you are invited to come to the banquet that Christ has prepared for you. So come, for the banquet is ready.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.